Hello, my name is Len Baer, and uh, this is an installment of uh, Science of Neuro Weapons for October 16th, uh, 2022. Today I will read my own letter I published on academia.edu uh, called The Inadequacy of Physician Mindset in the Air of uh, Neuro Weapons Used Against General Public. A little clumsy. This is no longer science fiction, this is reality. This alarming sentiment has been spelled out to neurologists, uh, neurologists, politicians, and the general public by every neuroweapon expert from Giordano to McRae to Krishnan and by many more of their colleagues who have affirmed the reality of brain damaging neuroweapons used against military, diplomatic and intelligence personnel overseas, and also against civilians conducted domestically. The latter acknowledgement was made public by Dr. James Giordano, a neurology professor at Georgetown University and a world leading expert on neuroweapons on February 10th, 2022, during the medical conference on Havana syndrome Held by, uh, held by the University of Texas. The significance of this revelation has been largely, largely undervalued because this makes mysterious Havana syndrome a public safety issue. Brain degradation neuroweapons have been brought to the forefront of public conversation in a significant way, starting with 2016-17, uh, series of reports, namely later Anomalous Health Incidents, or AHIs, also known to most as Havana Syndrome. However, while we're talking about federal um, employees who received permanent brain damage by directed pulsed radio frequency energy in the microwave range overseas, the conversation about domestic cases against civilian civilians is suspiciously absent. Experts have figured out how to diagnose this kind of brain injury and the government accepted its existence in federal employees attacked overseas. But let's make it absolutely clear. When civilians are attacked domestically on the ongoing basis, resulting in permanent brain damage, this becomes public safety issue that presents enormous risk to the members of the general public who are, being, who are being targeted with this remote brain degradation technology and to many who will be attacked in the future. Yet government agencies have not acknowledged any domestic cases of AHIs, neither in federal employees nor in civilians. Sorry, I'm, be, I'm being attacked right now as, as I read it. It is almost inconceivable that this very old technology originating at least in the 50s and its modern, more sophisticated varieties, varieties have not been figured out by our mighty intelligence services. One explanation of this mismatch was offered by a DC lawyer, Mark Zaid, who represents about 2,000 of federal employees attacked by these kind of uh, neuroweapons. It's a government cover-up. If you knew what it was, you would be very, very upset. This is an unsettling statement for all the past, current, and future victims of military-grade neuroweapon technology. But talk to an average person, politician, or neurologist about this real threat, and you will realize that the idea of someone remotely, intentionally, and repeatedly damaging one's brain falls outside of their worldview, common sense, and clinical experience. Academics, academics researching this phenomenon explain 
that, that when we are faced with a new problem, people typically choose old thinking that doesn't apply to novel threats. <clears throat> it has been established that Havana syndrome type newer weapons attacks are intentional. Intentionality denotes intelligence. And that's an important point that has to be clearly understood. Intelligence is capable of misleading, deceiving, distracting, and redirecting investigative efforts to uncover malevolent forces behind these attacks. There are scientific papers devoted to malevolent creativity that remind us that progress and innovation are not exclusive to those who stand for human improvement. Forces that want to harm and degrade human brain are just as inventive and creative. Excuse me. Special attention should be part. Should, special attention should be paid to an average physician mindset, which does not reflect current reality. First of all, physicians are not likely to diagnose something that they have not been trained on or been informed about. They demand established science to be a reliable source of uh, diagnosis. However when the subject is shrouded in government secrecy. Published science on the, sub on the subject is largely unavailable, with the exception of recent publications on the Havana syndrome. The concept of neuroweapons and inten intentional degradation of human brain is foreign to them. They, um, due to being uninformed or due to dismissing malevolent intent as a causative agent, doctors are not considering, not considering neuroweapons as a potential cause for clinical manifestation described elsewhere. And thus, they are not including it in the differential diagnosis menu. And if it's not on the menu, it would not be diagnosed. Here's what uh, has been uh, published in the Military Medicine Journal concerning AHIs. They designate these as UBIs, unconventionally acquired brain injury, as opposed to TBI, traumatic brain injury. Uh, the latter is synonymous to concussion. However, UBI is likely occurring due to intentional use of directed energy. And we are presented with two scenarios for this kind of brain injury. First scenario, source is unknown, but most likely is due to directed energy, which should be recognized, recognized as, as a gross violation of Geneva Convention and every human right. Number two, source is known, but classified. In this case, the main concern of the authors is that any information related to the issue of national security should be kept out of inquiry of academic and civilian scientists, as well as medical practitioners. I am shocked by the difference in ethical approaches in these two scenarios, especially in light of recent statements and revelations of repeated domestic attacks of civilians and federal employees. This is once again a public safety issue and the argument of national security simply does not work. What could be more important than health and security of our own citizens? Isn't that what national security comes down to? Finally, I'd like to list and summarize all the barriers that stand in the way of changing physicians' mindset toward this, uh, the issue at hand. Number one, lack of awareness of how neurotechnology and specifically neuroweapons have matured beyond their imagination. Second, 
being uninformed about publications on the subject, especially when shrouded in government secrecy. Number three, not understanding inten intentionality of this technology and the ability to target a single person. Number four, not understanding a reason why would anybody be attacked by this advanced technology, which is not a fair question to the victims since the, the, in, the intent is only known to malevolent forces who conduct these attacks. Number five, peer pressure and fear of being labeled as a conspiracy theorist. Robert McCrate, a prominent neuroweapon expert, mirrors my sentiment in his recent article published in Small War Journal. And he writes, coming to grips with the reality of non-kinetic disabling technology, which aims to specifically degrade neurological and cognitive functions, requires the suspension of disbelief among those who reside in the comfortable confidence that no such weapons exist. Instead, a serious inquiry among scientists, doctors, and military threat experts is needed to examine the credibility and authenticity of what he calls a neurostrike weaponry, concluding that such technology poses a real threat. And I could not have agreed more. Followed by multiple references, can be found on academia.edu. I will attach a copy in the description of this video. Thank you for listening. Until next time.